Hi guys, Squall here. In this video, we're going to take a look at Cube Control's latest premium racing wheel, the F-Pro. We'll talk through the new features, have a look at its design, the build quality, the software, and take it for a spin. So let's get started. Let's start off by taking a look at the construction and the layout of the wheel itself. And a big thank you to Cube Controls for sending this over for a review. So the main body of the wheel is made from a die cast aluminium. Along the front, you have authentic carbon fiber plate. You then have two hard plastic handles on either side, two gear pedals and two clutch pedals, and then various buttons. So the gear shift paddles at the back are magnetic, which means they have a very short throw and a very precise click. The paddles on the uh, gear selectors are quite adjustable. We'll take a look at that shortly. Down the bottom, you've then got two clutch paddles. The left one is generally used as a full clutch deflection, and the last one is used when you're doing a standing start so that you can set a, break, uh, a clutch biting point with the right paddle and release uh, when you're going off the lights. In terms of the button layout on the front here, what struck me about this was the fact that the whole thing is completely symmetric left to right. Most wheels are asymmetric in some way, usually around the joystick. But on this wheel, it's completely symmetric. So what you've got is you've got six buttons here and you can configure the colors of all of these. The top three here are very accessible while racing. The bottom three down here, you tend to have to hold the wheel slightly more awkwardly to reach. But these three are reachable while you're in full grip mode. Up the top here, you've then got two switchable and illuminating lights. So what I use these for is my wipers and my rain lights. In the center, you've got four rotaries, left and right rotaries. You can map these to whatever you want. And then here in the middle, you've got two joysticks. These are up, down, left, right, rotary and clickable. So you can go left, right, up, down, anti-clockwise and clockwise, and then press in. So you can often use one of these just to navigate the UI while you're racing. And then finally, you've got four of these spinners here. Now these are useful for things like your brake bias or your engine mapping, something like that. And there's two more up here that you can use with your thumbs. Now what's cool about this wheel is all of these lights that you see here are completely configurable in the software. So you can change them to whatever your color you like. So on the back of the F-Pro, uh, this is the mounting plate. It has multiple holes that you can use to mount whatever you're using for your wheelbase onto here, whatever adapter you need. The actual finish on this is black. You can get a blue version, I think is about another 30 euros. For me, I then mount my SimbiCube quick release straight onto that, and uh, that allows me to put it onto the wheel, but whatever wheelbase you've got, you'll need a different adapter. In terms of adjustability, you get these little torque uh, Allen keys here that go there. There's one on top, one on the bottom. That allows you to adjust uh, the position of the gear shift paddle relative to how close it is on your hand. And then you can also adjust this carbon fiber extension. This moves in and out, or you can even swap it with the other side and in, you know, reverse the shape if you want to. So you can basically get this paddle exactly where you want it and exactly how long is comfortable for you and your fingers. When it comes to the uh, clutch release, you get the same extensibility here but you don't get to adjust the actual position of it. There is, however, one adjustment that you can make, and that's how far the clutch comes in before it's fully locked. So that is the uh, adjustments that's available on the back of the F-Pro. Now this wheel has two killer features over its predecessors. The first one is its connectivity, and the second one is the way that you connect power to it. So inside the wheel, there's a battery which you charge. That allows the wheel to run without any USB connection, which brings me to the first and most important feature. This is the USB cable coming in. And what you can do is simply just pull it off. This is what they call QCon or Quick Connect, I guess it stands for, and it's a magnetic USB connection. So as well as providing a USB connection 
to your PC, that also charges the inbuilt battery. But you'll notice when I detached it, the wheel stays completely lit. Cube controls say that this will run on a battery from anything between 10 and 50 hours, depending on how bright you have the LEDs. And when it's down to about 5% battery, it will flash a low battery light up here. So you get plenty of notice to plug the cable back in. Now at the moment, my wheel is in a USB connection. If I want to change it to a Bluetooth connection, I have to use the dedicated button on the back, which turns the wheel off. I then hold this button down here and turn it back on. And then this light up here starts to flash blue and that turns solid when it has a Bluetooth connection to the PC. To change it back to USB, you simply turn it off, plug the cable back in, hold the button, turn it back on. And this little light up here will normally have a red symbol when it's charging, a yellow when the battery's low, or a green at other times. And that's it, it's as simple as that to change from USB to Bluetooth. Let's talk about how we change the colors of the buttons on the wheel. The way you do it is you use this software here, the Cube Controls F Pro software, and it gives you a picture of the wheel with the colors on it. So let's say we want to change this blue rotary here to, I don't know, let's go with a purple. So you click on it and you can either use one of the basic presets or you can pick the screen color. It's a standard Windows RGB picker. So you can pick any color you want. The slider down here will adjust the brightness or the intensity of it. So if you find that it's a little bit too bright, maybe if you're doing some night racing, you might want to bring the intensity down. You can do it with this slider. We'll just go with a full intense purple. So when you click OK, it then commits it to the wheel and then you click save setting and the wheel will now remember this. Even if you disconnect it, turn it off, turn it back on, it will automatically come back with that color layout. Speaking of customization, they give you these two sheets here, uh, which are, there's some black and some, when you see a white one, it's basically transparent. This one's got a black finish. So you can see on this wheel here, I've used a black map and a bias button which tones the, the RGB lights down quite a bit. What I want to do is show you how we put one of these stickers on here. So we'll, what we'll do in this example is we'll take one of these TCS stickers and we'll put it there. So we've got that as our traction control system. Do you ever play that game, Operation? It's a bit like that. Anyway, there you go. Looks good. Let's take a quick look at how we map some of these controls. So this one here, this little joystick in Seto Corsa, I've already got it uh, set up so that I could just move my way around the menu, go into the controls like that. Let's say we wanna map these um, two rotaries here, brake bias and engine mapping. Simply go down to where it has uh, brake bias and say increase brake bias, spin it upwards, decrease brake bias, spin it downwards, and then engine map, done. So now this will control bright bias, this will control engine mapping. So how does this wheel stack up against its competitors? In terms of build quality, it is top end. There's no doubt about that. It's a very solid wheel. One of the things that did strike me about this wheel though, compared to some of the other premium wheels, is the finish on the handle. It almost felt like over the last few years, a lot of um, premium wheels have had Alcantara leather on them. Take something like uh, one of the older Fanatec formula wheels. This has an Alcantara leather grip on it. This is a very high-end Cube Controls GTX wheel. This has Alcantara finish on it. This is the kind of finish that you would get on a real racing wheel. There's pros and cons in this, of course. It's very grippy to the bare hands, can be a bit too grippy, can chafe a little bit, but also if, you know, those little droplets of sweat that you get when you're racing, they will tend to soak up. Uh, into this over time and also it will wear out slightly which is why when this wheel arrived I was a little bit confused I thought why have they gone for like a hard plastic I mean it, it is it can be depressed slightly it does have a little bit of giving it but otherwise it is quite a shiny hard finish not so great with the bare hands I would say it's fine but if you do start to sweat it you probably get a bit of slip but absolutely fantastic when you combine it with some gloves, which I always recommend anyway, even on the Alcantara leather, just to stop it from ruining your, your leather finish. But once you put some of these gloves on, it is then 
superb and definitely um, a hard wearing finish I'd say but that is one of the things that struck me when I first got the wheel. So what are my final thoughts on the Cube Controls F-Pro wheel? Well, if you're in the market for a wheel, it's certainly something I think that you should take a look at and shortlist. Obviously it depends on your budget, that kind of thing, but it's a very well-made wheel in a very compact finish, and I do love the fact that you can change the lighting on it. I think the software is very much under development though, I think there's things in the software that I would like to see, like profiles, the ability to load different color profiles um, would be a really nice feature to have. Um, it's very basic at the moment, the software, but in terms of the wheel itself, it's obviously Cube Controls have put a lot of effort into this wheel. They've obviously listened to what people wanted from a wheel, and they've put it all together in one package, and it is a solid product. When I first saw that QCon connector, uh, on the bottom, I just thought that that is wonderful. Um, that really is. It just reminds me of the old um, the Maglog uh, on Apple laptops. That kind of power magnet combo is so useful to have. But then when you combine that with the built-in battery and the ability to go Bluetooth as well, you know, you have a product that you can just literally remove the cable and you get complete freedom of, of movement. Not that it's a problem for me, I'm personally fine having a USB cable, but I know some people prefer the wireless solution. So yeah, I'd say on the whole, this is a cracking product, very versatile, um, well made, looks really good. I do like the symmetry of the wheel as well, and uh, definitely something that you should shortlist when deciding on your next racing wheel. But that's it from me guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. Until the next one, take care. Happy racing.